Hello everyone, welcome back to Arrakis. I'm really keen to find out more about uh, Dune, the planet, and this 1992 game by Cryo. So let's uh, let's do what the, the game demands quite deliciously. Um, start playing uh, from the beginning of the game in order to load a previously saved game. I love this, this um, the mirror is my favourite way to do it because it's, um, it's as self-reflexive um, as the game itself. When it's doing things like this. Um, so we'll do there's some disc swapping. I think the disc the disc swapping uh, image is probably the only thing that Mars an otherwise quite well integrated experience for me. I love how all the um, the interface is themed and uh, it is an external external control but uh, all seems to meld quite well, I think. It's quite an intuitive flow of information. For example, if I'd forgotten the task I'd been given at the end of, of our last session of playthrough, Kenny Hammock's on hand to, to let us know. It was Fly Eastwards from Carthag Turek. Thanks, Kenny. I'm going to back out of the room slowly so we can uh, get a bit of breathing space there. Let's check in on the balcony. Let's see if there's anything happening there. There isn't. Okay. Um, and then we'll head back through the building. Hi, Mum. Hi, Duncan. And we'll go to here. Take our ornithopter. It looks like night is falling. Um, and we want to go to Carthage Jurek, please. I, once again, I, I, I might reiterate several. Um, things I love about the game, but the dynamic lighting changes as uh, as the um, day-night cycle passes is, is fantastic. So I th think, yeah, I think we're just coming into dawn now. Um, wonderful rosy hues for everything. Great, so I think we want to carry our journey on straight away to the east. I think we can just select any point on the map and just be heading in that direction, which is it's wonderful. Because as, as um, closely guiding as the game has been so far, there is still that freedom that you can you can kind of wander around the planet and discover things. It looks like a sketch there on the left. Ooh, and we turn to full daytime. Awesome. Why in the middle of this? I love the fact that there are these little signifiers that time is moving continuously, even even while I'm reading and talking to you guys. Um, go towards this place, please. I'm sure this is probably where we need to be. Okay, let's get in there. And swap the discs over here. Okay, okay some music should kick in again in a second. Here we are. Ooh, interesting. There's nobody here to greet us. Um, I guess we need to move through it then, like the, the palace building. Oh, here we are. Interesting. I love I love the design of this um, this underground place. It's, uh, it's very simply graphically done, but the sense of light in the in the distance. And I love this curving architecture. It's wonderful. Okay, let's talk to the Fremen. Um, one of those fantastic green steel suits. Welcome to Tuono Tabir, called Atreides. So you want to know about the principles of our steel suits? It's good that you are so keen to learn our ways. A steel suit is basically a high efficiency filter. Perspiration passes through the first layer and is gathered in the second. Salt is separated and the reclaimed water circ circulates to catch pockets from which you can drink through a tube at your neck. Breathing and walking provide the pumping action. Here's some steel suits for both of you, and I'll send some to your palace as well. I know of two more sketches in the vicinity whose leaders would be more than interested in meeting you, Paul Atreides. Travel north and east from here. Okay, I'll make some notes of that. So, do I know to be here? Let's go north and go east. We've heard of you. You're the son of the Atreides Duke and of Jessica, the... Could you be the one? Ellipsis. I love that. The um, I think it's the ellipsis as much as anything else that really makes me think of the visual novel uh, style of presentation. It just definitely, definitely has. It's an early, 
I think it's an early forerunner in, in uh, Western games for sure for that, that aspect. Well, great. So I think what we can do more expediently is... Oh, you know what we haven't done? I'll accept the map. We haven't recruited these guys yet. Let's see if they're willing to um, work with us. Yes. Fantastic. Um, let's see if you've got any specialties. My troop is settled in Torino Tabir, awaiting your orders. 1,740 men, motivation 30%. I think another thing I love about this game is there's an ambiguity about what you're picking up at each stage. I think typically it's going to be both story and colour and a strategic element as well. So the still suits probably, we haven't been told they have a mechanical effect, but they probably do. Um, and I don't think we're going to have to like perform any actions directly related to using a still suit, but knowing what they do helps fill in the details of the world as well. Um, so I love I love these little little drops of information that are expanding the vocabulary of the game as a game, and also the um, our understanding of the the fictional world that is taking place in. I think that's a really good way to to do a story, um, and can have these kind of parallel um, layers of development going on at the same time. So let's ask for more information. Do you have? Oh, okay. Um, Will you fight? Because we don't have any... You won't fight. Okay, we don't have any troops yet. How about spice? I've seen a spice harvest around. There isn't anyone using it. It would be nice to have it. My troop is settled in. Toronto beer. Okay. Oh, so you'd like a harvester, but the somebody else in the other CH wanted a harvester as well. Um, so... We aren't well equipped to extract this ice, but we're trying to do the best we can, however it would be better for the harvester. Yes, please repeat it, I was I was talking to the audience. Um, okay. No, that's fine. So I've noticed that one of our instructions now is modify equipment. What does... Oh! Okay, well that looks like a harvester, and that looks like um, an ornithopter maybe. Let's see, on trial and spice. Well, as it's here, should we give these guys a, yeah, and just click to do it. And they've got a harvester, I think. Amazing. So, no more orders for them. But I think I can look at the map and, and provide troops to three, that's awesome. Um, I think I can look at the globe and see our overall spice statistics. Uh, see results that one. Oh yeah, okay. This is this is going. So we've got some charisma. We've got one charisma, and our um, comparative values for these areas are, are going up. Oh, we can see the red spots on the map too. That's awesome. So I've I've actually got an inclination from to go from here to do I go back to the map? I do. To go back to our um, Previous, the previous search that we couldn't get help at. I wonder if now we've got three other, um, three other parties interested in working with us, whether they'll have um, changed their mind. We've got access to the still suits as well. Uh, I wonder if that will that will be different this time. I think the um, the game is quite good in its, its very um, direct and simplified um, bits of dialogue, uh, giving you a hint when somebody might be useful in the future rather than, than now, because I had a definite sense that we should come back here. Let's see if they want to do a deal. Oh, we'd heard rumours that you might call upon our services. Prospecting for spice is a dangerous and skillful job. Well, you're talking to the right person. My troop specialises in spice prospection. Prospection? I'm sure we're the only Fremen troop who are able to do this. Well, that seems like a big hint, doesn't it? Can you work with us? Are you willing to? Ah, good to see that your our knowledge is appreciated. Yes, board traders will work for you. Great. Let's see. My troop is set in Carthag, Timin, awaiting your orders. 
400 men, motivation 40%, that seems pretty high. My 2% are doing car factory, but uh, that's. Ask for more information? No, that's as much information as I get. Specialised in spice, you got to. We're unbeatable in spice prospecting. Here, I have something you may find interesting. Here, take this map of the planet. Oh, awesome. Can I. We can update this map as we send information. Send back information to you. Okay. We are the spice prospectors. We've already been here in Carthage 2, but our job is finished. Oh. Okay. Prospection has been done in this area. We can go elsewhere. It's pros pro I'd say prospecting, wouldn't you? Um, Alright, so how can I... Oh, move troop! That's a new thing. Show me three sketches where you want me to go next. And this is the gradient of density. Uh, the darker being the lower density. And the lighter being the, the greater. Ooh, well, I think I'd send them to Tuono Tabir, and then to the two that we have heard about but haven't visited yet. Awesome that they're already on the map. Are they already on our... they're already on here as well. This is amazing. Great, so they've got their, their instructions. Um, I think we should just head here, right? Visit the other two and see if we can recruit any um, anybody else. <gasps> Ooh, are we, are we seeing dusk now? This is awesome. I'm a big, a big fan of the uh, Amiga's color palette. I think it's very rich. So while we're doing this, I guess I can, I can pick up on some of the threads that we were talking about last time. Um, it's, it's still some a little ah. So here's the Paul Atreides we've heard about. Um, ellipsis. Okay. Leave that hanging. Um, do you want to work with us? Yes. Awesome. Would you like to? Yeah. Nice. Well, if I should thirty-one percent. Um, would you like to fight? No. I think something's got to give before we can get anybody to fight for us. How about spice? There has to be prospected for spice before we start mining it. Ah, oh, well, they're on their way. A trooper settled in Carthag Tabi. Yeah, well, yeah. So they just repeat the, the information, which is is handy. So you've constantly got access to to their current status. Um, we don't know how to prospect. It's a very peculiar job. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, no more orders. So they're they're just gonna wait to to do that. Um, and I can probably go to the other sketch just from here. I think. Fab. Yeah, so, oh, definitely night time. Hopefully we'll be able to spot everything we need to in the dark. Well, actually, the the um, day passes so quickly that it might it might be dawn again by the time we get there. Um, I was going to talk a little bit more about the analogy I'd made before between um, Dune and Dune 2, both, both uh, games published by uh, Virgin uh, in 1992 as a result of... Um, moving uh, the, the availability of the license between development teams and uh, Cryo, the, the first to be engaged, um, carrying on development of their game in secret. Um, I, I liken that to the um, the Emperor pitting the Atreides against Harkonnen within June for, uh, for overall uh, control of, of Arrakis itself. But I, I don't think that analogy really holds up because um, everybody won, <laughs> essentially. Um, ah, the same dialogue as the other the other place. Will you work for us? Oh, hang on, I clicked the wrong thing. Work for me. Fantastic. Can I give you some orders? I'll try the, the fighting thing again. No, that's fine. Um, spice then. And that really needs to be prospected as well. That's fine. Um, yeah, and each group seems to have its own uh, own allotment of, of people and own motivation, which is it's all good. So we'll just get the spice flowing, which is kind of the name of the game. Um, something of a motto of the, the book as well. 
I think I've still only got, yeah, the Onslaught, which I'm kind of suspecting is the one I'm flying around in, so I don't really want to give that away because walking through the desert, not much fun. Um, let's come out of there. Yeah, so as I was saying, I mean, every everybody won, Virgin won, because they got to release two two Dune games in, in the same year, and, and both were commercially successful, and I'd, I'd argue both are creatively successful as well. Um, so I mean, both development teams got to got to complete their games. I I suspect probably Dune Two for Westwood was um, a less of a bumpy ride and more of the game they they initially intended to make. I think uh, from what I've read that uh, this game was something of a compromise in the end with the um, the Anglophone uh, branch of uh, Virgin Games. Who, who wanted to make some alterations to, to Cryo's um, vision. Um, and I think, I, I'm assuming that's in making a lot of the, the text more explicit as to what you need to do and the, the uh, Sailor Fremen repeating the status of things as they, um, as they go along. Um, uh, because the, um, the other Cryo games I've, I've played fully or, or looked at um, have very little in-game exposition. You have to read the manual fully and um, and go on uh, visual prompts and, and audio cues mostly. Okay, so Gurney thinks we should go back to the palace. So uh, let's. I'm not going to ask Gurney to wait there. Um, Gurney's been very helpful so far. So let's fly home. Uh, how can I move the map oh, like that? Fantastic. Let's just fly home. It might take a day actually, because we're quite far out now. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so as I was as as I was recounting, um, both games um, successful. This well, I guess the the legacy of this particular game was limited limited success for for Cryo really. Um, they had a deal to to complete this game. Um, and Virgin would release it, and uh, they also accepted the the pitch for then what would be their next game, KGB. And then after that, Cryo would spin off into their own independent company and go on to develop and publish many games for for a long time into the early two thousands, I think. I think their very last game was a return to a to June. They tried to make another another June game, but um, they unfortunately failed financially shortly after that. So let's go into the palace and see what's happening. Look, the still suits have been stored here. Cool. It's rather different from here different here from the sketches we've been to, isn't it? Oh, interesting. Now this must be like a, a random little bit of conversational dialogue. Um, yeah, I guess so. Thanks, Gurney. So I don't don't know if there's anything we can... Oh, if you click on the screen then Gurney goes. Well, that's the secret, isn't it? I don't think I can interact with them, but the fact they're filled in does kind of complete the composition, which I like. Um, so I don't know if there's any practical, like, mechanical use for these within the game, but I love the fact that our environment has changed. That, that makes a, a story difference, uh, to me at least. Oh, and okay, Jessica's not here, but Duncan is. How are things going, Duncan? I must congratulate you on finding this prospecting troop. We're now well on the way, Paul. Our stocks of spice are currently 470 kilograms. Yesterday we have produced 2020. Uh, that is 150 better than the day before. I've been busy. Do remember that spice is by far the most valuable substance in the whole universe, and it can only be found here on June. So, yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying picking up these little threads as as time goes by so we get a little bit of story and a little bit of strategy uh, blended together um, which is really working for me and I'm I find it this is definitely much more of an exploration game than than Dune 2 is which is a, a straightforward strategy game so while both both these games have strategy elements unfolding in real time that's the sole focus really of, of Dune 2. But this is, is trying to layer 
um, different elements of, of the source material in there um, alongside each other and get the mechanics to work alongside each other. And there's, there's this sense of exploring the space, but also um, exploring the game in that new things are unveiled to you as, as things go on. We've got the still suits. Good work, Paul. Don't forget to have a look at the map to see what, if your troops are working well. Mm, I have been, thank you. Paul, as you know, we haven't been here at the palace long, but this old building may still hold many secrets. Our enemies were here recently and we have fa already found some traps. Well, your mother Jessica has this special talent for, well, sounding rooms and finding secret doors. Go with her and search the palace. Remember that now our most important task is to achieve good spice production. Okay. Well, I think that should be happening quite nicely in the background. But let's, um, I guess we can go to the bedroom. Ah, here is mum. Um, Jessica. Let's talk to you. I wonder what the proximity of so much spice will do to you, Paul. Paul, I gave you more than an education. There's more of a kind of special training. I expect that here on this very special planet you'll discover that you have many special powers. I can't tell you more for the moment. But each time you experience something strange or special, come and tell me. I will give you an explanation. Okay now, together we can try to explore the palace a little, okay? Okay. Awesome. Um, so this is suggesting to me that we're going to get uh, some of the um, kind of prophecy, religion, the, the more fantastical, more... I don't know, the psych it ends up being the psychedelic end of things as well. Um, I, I do hope we're going to get more of that in this game. Um, so I guess we need to ask Jessica to come with us. We both will try to examine the few rooms we can access. Go ahead, I'm following you. I feel nothing particular in this room. Okay, nice. Um, I think that, yeah, I think the character portrait just flashes a little bit when they first join you. Well, how about this room? There's nothing in particular in this room. Interesting. How about... Oh, Paul, how I miss our planet, Caladan, with its oceans and... Ah, oh, this is so different. There's nothing in particular in this room. Nice. I do love having these companions along. It, um... The gameplay of Dune 2 is, is very much more abstracted. Um, you don't get this sense of personality from it. For nothing in particular in this room. Okay. Um, how are you doing, Dunk? Okay, fair enough. Um, so there's not many more rooms to go, is there? I feel something here. It's so faint. No, let's continue. Are you sure? Okay, um, which direction were we going? Down? Wait, I can feel something. Ooh, I think there's a hidden door on the left. Yes, let's have a look. Oh, nice, so we get an extra direction to go. Did I click? I thought I clicked. Let's try again. Ooh, ooh hello. I expect these details aren't things we can click on. Um, what about now? It seems to lead somewhere, let's follow. So I guess that's the forward direction? Whoa, what's this? Secret control centre? It looks like a communication room used to send and receive long distance messages. I'm going to try to open this door on the right. Communication room, let's all gather here. Jessica really has stunning faculties, doesn't she? Thank you, Lito, but let me tell you this is an exhausting exercise. Okay, so this is going to be like a control centre for us, is it? As we are almost all gathered here, I would like to congratulate Paul for what he's done since we arrived here on Dune. He visited six searches and now six troops of Fremen are working for us. That's a good start, isn't it, Jessica? I'm pleased to notice that Paul now has a rising charisma among the Fremen. Oh, nice that they were, they're working all the mechanics in to the dialogue. I love it. Paul, I'm very proud of you. All of my hopes are set on you. 
Oh, I mean, that's, I think that's a really good way of personalizing the, um, the mechanics of the game. So not as you worked into the dialogue, it's, it's put some emotional weight behind it as well, as, as simplified as, as these interactions are. That's, that's really lovely. Fantastic. Well, I think I'm going to leave it here for, for this episode. And we'll come back and, and see, see what else we can discover within the world of Arrakis. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, take care. Bye bye.